welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Rode and Swartz, the Poloscope 3. I actually already released a uh, video about Poloscope, but that was uh, the first version. This one is the third version. It is very, very big and heavy. Oh my god. God. So I called for some help here. We got some professional help, and now we're gonna put this in the scale. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, put your, put your, put. And then let's just put it on the middle of this damn scale. So it's 41.5 kilos. Oh my goodness. Let's, <laughs> let's get it on the table, okay? So let's look at the back it is clearly a power supply in the top unit we got some fuses and mains entry and then there is a interconnect some power supplies and stuff here on the bottom so i believe we got definitely two completely individual uh, units so let's try and power it on we are two to do this i have a little helper here today and i'm going to power on the Mains first, and then my little helper is going to flippity flippity. Ooh, you are not afraid of anything. 140 watts. I was hoping to see something on this blue screen. This screen is supposed to be really... No yes, it is blue! Oh, it goes back and forward. What the heck? And then there's a green afterglow holy moly that looks nice see we got a um two color phosphor a fast blue and a slow green you have no idea how beautiful and cool that looks yeah that is of course the sweep speeds ah oh, so we can sweep slowly and then we got some markers and then oh, it restarts like that. Okay. <laughs> that is the coolest thing ever. So what are we doing? Oh, okay. Here we go. Wow. wow, wow, wow. Right, let's try and input some signals and play a little bit with this thing, huh? I've been playing a lot with this machine. I'm so sorry the um, the camera don't seem to be happy about the refresh rates of the screen here. So I can probably change the refresh rate here a little bit here. So you'll see on the video uh, green and blue. We have a very, very fast uh, blue phosphor and a very slow uh, green phosphor. So if I go like that, it's probably showing up um, a lot better. So what you see here is uh, the level, the, the level on the detector. All those detector inputs here, they don't really care about the frequency. They only care about the level of whatever kind of carrier frequency you have. Then what you see here is the level of that frequency. The signal generator can, of course, generate whatever kind of frequency you want and then it will uh, modulate pulses for timing and those will be in sync with the sweep so this is actually a time delay um, time domain kind of uh, instrument which shows the level of a signal delayed from its generator so it's perfect for radar um, tests and calibrations and setup for all sorts of radar installations and um, what i've done here to create those fantastic curves here i just take a few meters of uh, bnc um, cables and this kind of cable here you see when i touch the cable it's i'm moving stuff and then i put a a t T connector here and a, and two little joints here and I can even take the end of that cable here and then a load or oh, it's actually an alternator but let's just call it a load for now right so look at the look at the curve and see what happens when I connect the the load see <laughs> and of course there's a so 
all the funky uh, ringings from this unconnected end is ending. But because there's a T joint, there's now this one pulse from the T. And that will be all the other uh, reflections from that other end. So that's uh, quite funny. And uh, by changing the start and the stop frequency like this, see, I can I can move my picture here on the screen. I can also turn on all the different grids. I think it's like that. Uh, let's crank up the sweep. So now you see all the frequency or the time um, markers. And, and now it's easier to see what's happening when I zoom in on the frequency. And you will see when I zoom in like that, the two markers goes closer. I mean, that is really, really cool to have a time domain level indicator. And of course, I can I can decide how many and how bright I want the different markers, as you can see here, or I can just switch them completely off. I can also change the different levels of the signal generator. In the, the, that will be ten dB steps or one dB step, and the reason why we see four different um, uh, level curves. That's actually because I've enabled all those. So you have that one. And I can I can just select its brightness. So now it's uh, gone. I can crank it up a little bit again. So now it's dim. I can move it up and down. And I can, I can select the level of it like that. I can I can take the the balance between the two that affects both of them and then there's the other one and the brightness of that one and the position of it all sorts of things so two different levels can be indicated on that input and I, I can of course do the same on that input so it can be uh, before the mixer, after the mixer, different places in your receiver or your detection uh, system. So it's uh, very, very effective. See, we've got some more here. And yes, that is the other one. Uh, so that was the position. Let me move it up there. And here is not the one. I don't know. Also, I got that one, yes, down there, and I can add more, many more level markers. So all those are level markers up here, and then I can move them around. I don't know if that is easy to see, but all those are nice, nice level markers. Those are all the markers I've added, and I can just turn them on and off. And this way you can very, very easily uh, recreate levels and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely a uh, funny, funny instrument uh, from the 1970s. I can't wait to, uh, to open it and have a look inside. So before I open it inside, I think we should have this uh, power consumption also uh, recorded on the video, 143 watts. No, it's actually getting nice and warm here on the right side. I've been playing around with this for an hour now. There's no nasty smells or anything, so that's great. Let's uh, let's play a little bit with the modules because the the different modules here you can easily take them out. So the three modules up here all you have to do is unscrew this one and then you can pull them out so this is the amplifier lean lock oh. Oh, let me see it's actually a little bit heavy it's using two plug-in aha 
and we've got two different, three different screws in here. So that means you could potentially plug in two other modules instead of one larger module like that one. And it's actually a little bit warm. There isn't any tubes or anything like that in this uh, unit. Uh, the only tube there is is, of course, the CRT. I'll, of course, go and have a little. So, yeah. This is the deflection amplifier. So, if I take out the deflection amplifier, aren't we going to see a dot on the screen? It's a little tempting to try and turn it on without the modules in it. And that one is just only a level detector. I should probably take away the, the little metal screen here. That will be the the five markers. And what have we got here? Probably just some switches, uh, diode switches that selects the different analog levels uh, on each uh, scan. That's more or less how that is done, isn't it? And this is the inside of the marker lines. So we've got some flip-flops, JK flip-flops, if I'm not mistaken, right? And some gates. And that'll be some diodes down there. And the different voltages that go over here to the left. And that is all the diode switching. So that's definitely how that is done, exactly what I imagined. So this is the high frequency level detector input. And um, it's actually a little bit interesting because what we get here is, uh, as you see down here, it's 75 ohm. So half of this part here is, of course, a load resistor. So this is terminated correctly. But what you see in here is the detector diode. And after that detector diodes, it's low speed. So they just have, as you can see here, just a wire that goes to, see, goes to this switch and it goes back to here. So some resistors and capacitors and stuff. So it's really not that important anymore how it is done. But the first part here is all the nicey, nicey stuff. I could probably take out that detector diode. That could be fun. See, it's isolated down there. Yeah, that could be interesting. See, and that was exactly what I expected. In here is a... A transmission line that goes down to the load and the load is here in the bottom and that is the detector tire we could this is in the socket so we can just rotate this thing around and you can even see the the diode symbol on it and there's actually also a number it's seven three one from Siemens so that one will be able to detect really really high Frequencies, cute, huh? So this is a low frequency input, lean lock, and two different labels and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that is a nice end connector, by the way. And that was is in 50 ohms. And uh, this one uses two diodes. So there's one down there and then there's one up here in a socket as well and it is really really made nice and beautiful we've got a big copper block here for some transistor amplifiers temperature stabilization something in there in a socket those nice modules that is definitely beautiful beautifully made you gotta be a little bit impressed i mean this is 1970 tech and on the bottom got all the different uh, wires 
for the back plane interconnection and all that kind of stuff. And here on the back, we've got DC filters for all the different stuff that goes in and out. And that'll be the inductors and the feed through capacitors. And look at that funny one here. That one is bubbled. So that means this one is melted, see? Ooh, there's a balloon in that one. So something melted or overloaded this in its early life, I guess. And if you power up the unit without any plug-in modules, all you can do is play around with your markers. Because, see, that'll be my markers. And of course I can play with, yeah, the start and stop frequency and all that kind of stuff. That is definitely done down here that is not connected to any of the modules but that is more or less all you can do here we got some funky marker stuff so this is how you pull this unit apart uh, they actually made some holes here in the handles for your screwdriver to access the screws down below here and they did exactly the same here so you can see it and then you can pull out each of the units from the chassis so this is the signal generator part first so let's have a little look at that one that is going to be some interesting look here it is very heavy and really well built that'll be the 1 db attenuator and that is the 10 db attenuator it goes in here with all those couplings we have to go in there and have a little look that's a another local mains transformer local power supplies and capacitors and probably power supply and stuff um, here on the back we got some uh, indicators for <coughs> indicators for the different voltages and that is of course the interconnect cable to the main unit i expect some of those pins to be mains voltage so this one is generating its own local supplies of course because you can use this in combination with other kind of equipment the oscillator cards are extremely sensitive and should be treated with the oh, most care wow we're gonna be careful here oh yeah the pop meters look at that so that will be the start stop of the frequency settings remember look at that the two pot meters they're connected together down here isn't that just nice why are we having two pots in parallel the same over here that is a little bit cute and a little plug-in cut there very very compact they, uh, they're really using every little corner of this unit for some stuff hey let's put the capacitors here now it fits down here and that'll be the voltage selector by moving the fuse in four different positions you can create the voltage setup and this is of course the bottom side and this is the 10 db step attenuator you are of course not surprised to see a section section attenuator like that there's even a motor for remote look at that I really would like to see in here if that's possible without causing damage or anything oh, that is a pot meter with one two three four five different sections <laughs> I can't remember when I saw a potentiometer with that many sections before that is interesting so I've removed the lid here and we can now have a look inside the 
signal generator power amplifier section. I believe there's like a mixer detector or some kind of stuff here. This looks like a balloon for detection and some stuff like that, right? Because see, we've got a coax cable inside. Oh, what is that? It's just a piece of nothing. But there's a coax cable here and a balloon into a feed point. Ah, so this is balanced. And this is single-ended, right? And then there's a, definitely some sort of a mixer here. And um, so here we got some power amplifiers, some filters. And then we got some other sections with different filters as well. And here's we got, yeah, this is the higher frequency. And some amplifier transistors and it even say here be careful not to touch the inductors down there so this is how you trim the the filter I tried to remove that one is that was just super loose so that could have fallen out I guess but I still can't see anything that is going on inside this attenuator section here so that is 10 dB per yes 10 dB per step 3 4 5 6 and it goes from 0 to 60 tick 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 that is just how it is beautifully made so this is the top side of the signal generator with all the lids uh, removed so that's again some more filters and the power supply, um, power amplifier from the bottom side. It's a little bit untraditional the way that they have done the cooling for the power transistors. And look at that. Yeah, those standoffs to this piece of metal and then out to this thin piece of metal here. Really? Is that going to work? Well, well. And so that will be the input, some input filters, probably some mixers and stuff like that. See, we got two different signal paths that's combined together here and all that. Yeah, that will be the, the power supplies and that will be all the low frequency and IF and mix up here and mix up there and do all the funky stuff. Got a little crystal here. That's probably doing all the markers and and such on on the crystals as well. Is that a socket? Yeah. How cute is that? See, so that one is interesting, and that one is in a socket too. Beautiful. And some of those resistors there, high precision. I think that is actually some really really interesting. Resistor types, they're, they're really rarely seen, by the way. And it's because they are very expensive, high precision types, and this is why you don't see them that often. But it's just very, very beautifully and super compact made. Inside the CRT section, but it's not just a CRT section, this is also doing sweeps and markers and all that kind of stuff as far as I think I could actually try and power this up alone and see what it will do I think somebody's did some service here navigating around the CRT section and well, of course again power supply and I very large mains transformer and what a big capacitor here and that's of course only access to all the plug-in modules we also got some stuff down there and some more stuff down there so let's try and uh, rotate it a little bit and have a look over here 
Yeah, I think that is just, just a power supply, right? So that will be the right side. And oh, again, some more connectors so it can easily be disassembled somehow. Rectifier, capacitor section. Again, the same voltage selector by fuse. So that's quite nice. I believe we got some more connectors in there as well. So yeah, maybe we can take out the entire power supply. Oh, we got some mains entry filter there. And under the CRT, we got all the different sweep settings. So yeah, all the timing and all that kind of stuff for that is actually located here. So maybe that is going out the, the interconnect to the other one. And that is an external sweep time. So that is cool. So yeah, I maybe sweep is done here. And that will be high voltage. Let's have a look in there, right? So this is the high voltage multiplier this is a classic way to do it and then there's of course the high voltage transformer the high voltage transformer is connected into a 140 kilohertz uh, oscillator and that is also driving the horizontal uh, deflection coil just like a tv set and then the vertical deflection, uh, that will be some transistors in here. And that is uh, driven by the curves you want to display. So that's all in here. And the oscillator and the deflection and, and all that kind of stuff. So, And uh, then there is a connector here. And uh, I will show you where that goes. So that connector is that one. And it goes all the way to the deflection coils. So that means when this one is, is, is running with its magnetic deflection and the horizontal is always uh, running, uh, that means I can't really use this as an XY uh, scope or put in my classic uh, graphics because uh, I would need some arresta. Uh, graphics I could of course make that but I don't have time to play around with this so I think I want to uh, assemble it again and just <laughs> let it be uh, the nice unit that it is really the way that it is but it could be fun just to display my graphics as a little final touch to it but unfortunately that is not compatible we could also have a nice little little look inside this little CRT end board. So now we are behind the CRT. And that is of course the end of the CRT, right? And those boards that's neatly located here, they're doing all the different brightness handling. And that's of course because it's uh, quite fast, it needs to to blank and different brightnesses and all that kind of stuff for all the different uh, markers and sweeps and stuff. So that is, of course, something that needs to be located right here. So it looks like those are in, no, those are not in socket, but this one is in socket. And that one is in the socket too. And we see all the different diode switches and funny signal multiplexers and whatnot. So I think this is the final cut of the video. It was just one little super funny detail. Yeah, okay. A leak capacitor. As you can see here, ooh, that's bad. But look at that. And that one. Isn't that just funny? So even the designers of all the swatch, they can do the classic up-down bug. Or maybe those ICs, the data sheet, D 
didn't specify if you count the pins from the top or from the bottom. Because why would you mount those ICs upside down? That is of course what you want to do if you count the pins from the wrong side. Isn't that just beautiful? And I'm actually a little bit happy to see that everybody can do that mistake. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you around. Bye bye.